from Northern Ireland to Staten Island to Key West. My next guest this morning, she sure knows how to leave an impression wherever she goes. Fortunately for us, she's hoping to stay put in the Keys for a while. Now, Fiona has enjoyed a very long and varied career in the Irish and American folk music scene. She'll share some of her stories with us today. Fiona, thank you so much for being here with me. Well, thank you for asking me, Jenna. My pleasure. All right, Fiona, I've had fun reading up on you, and something that struck out to me immediately, Fiona, was that music is something you were just born with, this gift. You've been doing it since you were just a little girl. I have. Um, my grandmother taught music. My father sang. Everybody in my family plays or has played an instrument at one time. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it was just something that came very naturally. Northern Ireland, Fiona. Mm. Northern <laughs> Ireland. Definitely yes. a change here in the Key West from yes. Northern Ireland. You had a very interesting career, though, in Northern Ireland. You were in a peace movement singing. I was uh, back in the mid-70s. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, Northern Ireland was a very troubled province. And a couple of ladies formed a peace movement, which became an international and overnight success. Um, I traveled with them as the singer for that movement all across Europe and the United Kingdom and um, went with them actually. They won the Nobel Peace Prize. It was Maraid Corrigan and Betty Williams mm -hmm. back in 1976, but don't quote me on that, it might be 1977. <laughs> and I went with them to collect the Peace Prize okay. as part of that delegation. So it was a big honor. Were you in your teens then, or 20s? How, I how was just 19. You were just 19, yes. so you were just yes. starting. I was. <laughs> yeah, I was just sort of starting to get out there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it was a good career choice, as, you know, politics and music aren't necessarily good bedfellows. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could see that yeah. being the case. Now, Fiona, how did you come over to the States? I came over to visit an aunt in 1977. Um, my father had lived here, actually, throughout my younger days and there was no work for men in Northern Ireland. So we only got to see him about once or twice a year. But when he came home, he would tell us these wonderful stories of America. And when I was a little girl, I used to say, someday I'm gonna go live in America. And my mother to her dying day always said, I knew Fiona would end up in America because that's all she ever talked about when she was little. Uh -huh. So I stepped mm -hmm. off the plane at JFK, July 31st of 1977 and went, Yes, it's true. This is where I want to be. That's wonderful. It so it was, was a, easy. It was a dream come true for you when you stepped off that plane. It really know? was. It took me another about six years to get a green card and get sorted out legally, which was difficult. But I honestly think it was worth it. I love it here. I love mm -hmm. the diversity of culture. And I think just it, it's such a rich country. There are so many things, so many variables on mm -hmm. any given day. How was life performing in New York, Fiona? A little crazy, a little <laughs> hard. Um, it was sort of groundbreaking because there weren't any Irish female soloists back then. Most women who sang, sang with a band and had the comfort of, you know, three or four pieces male behind them. And here was I with a guitar stepping up to do a man's job. And it wasn't, I wasn't very popular at first. And a lot of the guys would try to cut you out and some of them were very supportive. But things like trying to do recordings, trying to learn how to do CDs, those are things I learned how to do myself because nobody would tell me how that was done. Really? It was a very closed shop. Mm -hmm. Wow, so you really had to go through a lot of challenges then, Fiona, as an Irish female singer. Yes, mm -hmm. it, it was definitely frowned upon. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, my own mother had a couple of recordings and would never actually play them or admit that her daughter was a singer in bars and pubs and things like that. And she came out to visit me for a few months, um, it would be the 1980s, mm -hmm. and I would come home at three or four in the morning, absolutely exhausted. I've just played five or six hours. I've had a coffee or, or maybe a burger with a bunch of musicians. And mm -hmm. you know, you go home in the subways in New York and my mother would always be standing there in her robe and go, this is scandalous. What do the neighbors think, you know? <laughs> said, my daughter coming home at four o'clock in the morning, and I'm like, Mom, I just came home from work. <laughs> <laughs> right, you weren't getting into any trouble no, or anything. No, I wasn't getting into trouble, no, not at all. <laughs> just doing what you love. Fiona, you've gone through a lot of challenges in your life, such as that, and then you've also gone through other challenges down the road. You lost a child, yeah. but, but you always were able to come back to your music. Um, it has shaped and directed my life, Jenna. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's actually how I ended up down in the Keys. Uh, you touched on a very sensitive subject, obviously, but a lot of people come to the Keys on vacation, people come for romance, people like it and they come back. After my son died, I went through a period where I just couldn't sing. I just couldn't find the inner joy to do that. And Alan Craig and Hilary Craig, who used to own Finnegan's Wake, I had worked for them for a number of years in West Palm Beach, called me out of the blue and said, Fiona, I heard you sang a song in Pennsylvania at the Shannon pub last night. Are you back singing? I said, no, Alan, I'm not, absolutely not. It was a fluke. I was there and, you know, the band asked me to sing a song for the audience. And he said, I'm really desperate. I need someone to come down. Um, Harley Poker Run weekend, I think it was the end of October. Mm -hmm. And he said, please. He said, just come back. And I said, Alan, I just can't. I don't even know where my guitars are anymore. They're somewhere in the back of the garage. And uh, he pleaded and begged. And I eventually said, well, OK, I'll try it. But he, he said, I'll pay you. Come down. I'll fly you down. and Just play an hour a night. I just need somebody to cover these dates. And I came down and stepped up on the stage and just started to play and it got me back to where I needed to be. Mm -hmm. And I often tell people, if you ever want to recover from anything, come to Key West. Mm -hmm. I used to go out at Fort Zachary Taylor every day at sunset before I'd go to work and just watch the sun go down. And then I'd go out by the airport in the mornings and watch the sun rise again and I said, the world's okay, it's going to be all right. So this was the medicine that really you was. needed. Yeah, it really was. And I think for a lot of people, this is mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. they need to be. Well, I'm glad you're here, and you're performing you. at Finnegan's Wake, and you also perform at McConnell's? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, this is a new venue for me, down in McConnell's. We're trying to make something of Tuesday nights and bring people out, and we'd love to see some local people come. Okay. Fiona, one thing that our viewers have been seeing during this interview is your email address. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. You are not a witch, so where does that no. come from? <laughs> I, I often have people say, are you into the white hearts or the dark hearts? No. Um, my husband, actually, my second husband, Walter, gave me that name mm -hmm. when we first met. He said, you're a real witch, an Irish witch. <laughs> so when we bought a boat, mm -hmm. that was the name of the boat. Okay. We actually sold it down here many years ago, but it, it's kind of stuck. Okay. Well, I like it. It is well, catchy. <laughs> Nobody ever forgets it. Yeah, that's right. And if you want any more information about Fiona, feel free to send her an email or give her a call. Fiona, thank you so much for being on. Thank you very me. much, Janet. It's <laughs> it was a, a pleasure. Bye-bye. I'm going to take a quick break right now. I'll be right back after these messages. Stay with me.